What if Mr. Beast went to Kenya and gave people $10 million? $10 million. Well, a group of economists actually did this. They went to Kenya and they found 10,000 families and gave each family about $1,000. 18 months later, the economists came back to see how those families were doing. I'm going to explain to you how, what happened with these economists, what happened with these Kenyan families, and how Mr. Beast can help us understand what's going on here. Right. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Mark Power, where we are building a community of people interested in and excited about economics. I'm gonna dive right into explaining what happened in Kenya, at least the setup. Then we're gonna go back and talk about Mr. Beast, and at the end, I'm gonna show how these things come together, and they're gonna help us understand the fiscal multiplier. So what happened in Kenya? Well, this group of economists went to Kenya and they found 653 villages. Now, of those 60, 653, they randomly chose half of them, and that was about 328. They went to these villages and they found every poor household in these villages and gave each one $1,000. This is very much a Mr. Beast-like experience because these villagers, these families, $1,000 to them was like nine months of spending money for that family. When you give someone so much money that it's like what they make in a year and you're just like, throw it at them and see how they react. It's just, it's so much fun to me. I don't know. I mean. So that 325 other villages, they didn't get any money, but the economists still kept in contact with them because they needed a control group. They needed a comparison group to see what this money was actually doing for those families that received it. So now as we look at what's going on here, there are three types of families. First, there's a family that received money. Second, there's a family that lives in the same village as those families, but didn't get money. And third, there's families that are in other villages that didn't get money at all. And we can actually track what happened with each of these. And so the economists, before all of this started, they talked to all of these families, they talked to businesses, and then 18 months later, they came back to see how everyone was doing. And this is where Mr. Beast comes in because we can use Mr. Beast to predict what happened in these villages. I'd rather not have money and see things like that. Let's start by thinking about one of Mr. Beast's biggest videos. You now have 24 hours to spend the $1 million. Are you ready? So now we're asking ourselves, what does a family do when they're suddenly given a ton of money? Mark was the winner of the $1 million challenge, and although he won $1 million, once you take into account the fact that he had to pay his coach, that he promised to pay somebody else, and also that he had to pay taxes, he had $510,000 in disposable income. So what does he do with this money? He's spending money on electronics, he's buying a house, he's buying cars, he's giving money away to family. But he doesn't spend all of the money. He saves $77,000 for investments and kind of like a rainy day account. We went into an investing firm and they told us we couldn't record. So if we take that $510,000, that means he spent $433,000 on things to have and then he saved $77,000. Or what we could say is he spent 85% of that money and kept 15% of that money in savings. Now that we've seen what somebody has done with a large drop of money, what do you think happened to the people in Kenya? So like I said, 18 months after they gave this money, the economists came back and they're gonna to talk to the people who got money and the people who didn't get money and they're gonna see what happened to these people over time. So let's start at least with the people who got the money. And then we're gonna talk about the people who live in the same village but didn't get any money at all. So no big surprise, the people who got a ton of money were spending more money. It turned, <laughs> like, that shouldn't surprise any of us, right? Uh, expenditures were about 12% higher. Now, there's always a concern that we'll have when we think about just giving people cash. All I made him promise me was that he would not spend it on drugs and he would not spend it on excessive alcohol. So these things like alcohol and drugs are called temptation goods. And the economists were interested in whether these people were spending money on temptation goods. They found out that they weren't spending any more money on temptation goods than they were before. So what were they spending money on? Well, like in Mr. Beast's videos, these people were spending money on food. Fishy would use your money to grocery shop. I'm such a dad. <laughs> 
on assets. Basically, he's using part of his money as a down payment on a house. Dude, last time I got groceries. Yeah. That was boring. Yep. And on improving their houses. I know my parents need some stuff for their house. So uh, my parents' windows are super crappy. They're like super thin. On average, these people had spent 60% of the money that they had received. Now remember that Mark the millionaire had spent 85% of his money. And so at first this might look different, but it's really not that surprising because Mark had 24 hours to spend his million dollars. And the Kenyan villagers, they have you know, all their lifetime to spend the rest of it. So it makes sense that they might save a little bit more and not spend that much. Here comes the surprising part. What happened to families living in the same villages as the cash recipients, but who didn't get money themselves? To understand what happened, I think a great visual metaphor is a tray of ice. Think of families in a village like cubes in an ice tray. You can pour water into one of those cubes and it will save some of it, but eventually it spills over and starts going into the other cubes. Now, if each of these cubes is a family, think of the water like money. You can give money to one household and they might save some of it, but they're spending the other part of it. And when they spend that money, it's going to other people in the village. They're buying food from a neighbor. They might be buying services from somebody across the street. Whatever it is, this money is going over into the other families. And then now that these families have some, they're gonna save some of that money and then spend it and other households are gonna get some of that money. This is called a fiscal multiplier. As you put money into the economy, it doesn't just have the effect of on the people who received it, it spreads out and affects all the other families in the economy. And sure enough, when these economists talked to the families who didn't get cash, but were living in the same villages, they also had increased their expenditures by almost the same amount. Now, one thing you might be concerned about is that some households see their neighbors getting all this cash and spending money, and then they think, well, I've got to keep up with the Joneses. I've got to spend my money. But the economists tracked this. They tracked where, whether they were spending money that they had saved, and there was no evidence of dissavings. Instead, what had happened was they looked at businesses and business incomes had gone up. People were just getting paid more because more people were spending money. One way we can calculate this fiscal multiplier is to look at how much people are spending. That's their marginal propensity to consume. And we use that in this formula and we can find that every dollar spent will have this much effect in the economy. So remember that people were spending about 60% of their income. So plugging that into this formula, we find that every dollar spent in the economy should have $2.6 worth of economic activity. And sure enough, after looking at all the data, they find that that's the exact amount that this economy improved by. Spending money on just some households then had an effect on the rest of the households in that village. That was amazing. We Perfect. Did it. That made me feel good. Let's that do that again. This was my first video in a series of videos looking at the economics of YouTubers. So be on the lookout for those videos. But you should also check out my video on Mr. Beast and Team Trees and how I predicted when they were going to reach 20 million trees on Team Trees. Also be sure to subscribe if you want to join this community and we'll see you in the next video.